right, buddy, what do we got here? All right, this week we are going to do something different than flying. We're gonna build a battleship. We've been wanting to push the limits of what Maker Foam can do. What better to do is to make a boat out of it. Last week, uh, if you guys saw in the background, we had the hull of what I think is kind of a cool looking battleship. I thought we'd make it 10 feet. We blew it up over the weekend about almost 20 feet. <laughs> so, <laughs> you ready to see it? Yeah. All right, look, I labeled it A, B, C, D. What happened? What did I do wrong? It's always good to have spare battleship parts. <laughs> F. F. Oh, there you go. Okay, good, we're good. That's the battleship. <laughs> My goal today is uh, I want to get the hall built, and then I'll need everyone's group uh, effort to maybe build like the guns, the turrets, the tower, you know, and, and through the week we'll, we'll try to have this wrapped up at Wednesday. And then during that time, we're going to work on some planes, and then we'll have an epic battle. What do you <laughs> think? Right. Down? Yeah, sounds like a deal. Right. Do it. So the top deck is actually a little bit bigger. It's about an inch and a half bigger than the bottom deck. So it's going to give the sides an angle. But what we don't want to do is actually have to glue down the piece or try to manipulate it. So I'm going to cut a bunch of strips and we're going to use those as formers to kind of hold the piece right at the angle. So when we put the glue down, it captures that angle perfectly. That gave us the right spacing to get the right angle. We don't have to do measurements or anything complicated. We just simply pull it tight, even it out, glue it in. We already did the sides and now what we're doing is we're pulling in each side of the boat to give that classic hall shape. A uh, nice thing about this is since this is nice and flat, everything should be indexed and registered to be able to fit nice and neat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so light. That's a big boat. It is a big boat. We have time to float tonight. Yeah. All right, let's say we do a float test. Float test. <laughs> Look at that guy. Uh, <laughs> Look at it, it's still coming. Oh jeez. You need any help? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. right. Got it, Captain? Yep, I got it. Right. Watch your nose. Here, hold on. How about how about you just how about you guys turn around so the hole's facing the way it's gonna go? Yeah, the front. Yeah. Goes. All right, the front's guy going first. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Who's catching it? That looks. <laughs> amazing. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Oh, that was not good. <laughs> Wait, the other, that, that can't be more than a quarter inch under the water. Oh, it's oh, not no. even. Yeah, not even, Josh. Yeah, now, was it yet, Dave? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. It's not going to go the other way. Oh, Oh, guys, just gonna go right here, guys. Handle the rest. Grab it. Well. Just kick it. Kick it. That'll send it downstream. Oh, that's what we want. <laughs> So one of the things that we noticed is that it's going to be very much a sailboat because it's so lightweight. When we go to float it and do battle, that's one of the things that we're going to take into consideration is the wind because we'll be trying to drive it in one direction. The wind is going to be greatly affected because it's so lightweight. It's like it's, it's, like it's made out of airplane material or something. So what's going to happen next is they're going to take the ship inside and Jeremy's actually going to start adding details like turrets and a tower to the battleship. So I wanted to take this time to tell you guys about the sponsor for this video and that is World of Warships. Cool thing is is Jeremy's actually using the game World of Warships to come up with inspiration for the details of our own custom battleship. And the reason why is because the game has highly detailed warship models. Now, if you aren't familiar with World of Warships, World of Warships is an online mass multiplayer game where you control an entire fleet of historically accurate warships and battle each other on the ocean. Best thing about it is it's free to play. And if you use our link below to register, you get a ton of free stuff, such as 250 doubloons, a million credits, and best part of all, you get an entire free aircraft carrier, a historically accurate representation of the USS Langley, and it even comes with a free port slot and three days premium time when you use our specific code. A couple things that's really cool about World of Warships is one, the weather dynamics. Each different weather
weather system creates a completely different play style and changes the tactics and the strategy that you have to use to achieve victory. The other cool thing about World of Warships is it's an ongoing project. It was released originally in 2015 and they've been further developing and coming out with new updates all the time, even every week with things such as new missions and even new ships. One of the reasons Jeremy used the game to develop some of the inspiration for our battleship is because of how highly detailed the 3D graphics in this game are. We even heard that it takes the developers up to six months to develop the graphics for one of these warships. That's how accurate they actually are. So again, check out the link below. Specifically, our link helps us out a ton and huge shout out to World of Warships. It's because of awesome sponsors like them and our awesome community that we're able to do what we do, not just making the videos, but also doing crazy events, supporting our STEM curriculum. Flight Test has so many different things going on and it's truly because of awesome sponsors and everyone out there viewing that it's possible. So let's head back into the shop and see how that battleship's coming. People are often overwhelmed when they look at something like a battleship and they try to recreate it in foam board. I've been building out of things like cereal boxes as a kid and something that I learned through the process is what you have to do is take whatever it is that you're trying to recreate. It's easiest to start with the center and build out from there. So I started with the tower and now all I'm doing is creating different shaped and sized boxes holding them up to different areas around the tower and seeing what might look best. If I need the box to be a little bit smaller, I cut the end off and then I already have a box shape made that I can move somewhere else and I don't have to build another box from scratch. Through this process of creating box after box, holding a few up, some may not work, you eventually piece by piece put something together that turns out looking pretty epic. Jeremy has done an amazing job getting this ready here and now what we need to do is we need to actually make it controllable because what I want to see happen is when we put this in the water we can actually turn it and we can navigate it just like a real battleship. We don't have any kind of boat materials, we're an airplane company. I'm going to take a really big motor, put a very small prop on it and hopefully we are going to have the right amount of thrust to move this back and forth. Now we don't have a big enough lake to have a rudder and I don't think honestly with this boat a rudder would be really effective. So the way I think we're going to figure this out here is I'm going to use a, something called the FT Simple Element Firewall. Oftentimes what we do is we make simple firewalls, control horns, things like that that you can not only build with art kits if you're scratch building, but you can also put them on your own creations too. I'm going to go ahead and put one motor right here on the back bow and then I'm going to go ahead around the front here. I'm going to go ahead and try to put a motor on each side of the bow just under the surface of the water here and on the other side. We can actually power up one motor more than the other to turn the bow left or right and hopefully that'll give us enough control to actually make it sail and maneuverable just like an airplane or an RC car. I didn't want the prop to actually go above the water because it'd just be splashing. Yeah. That's not what a battleship does. But also, feel that. Like, see how flimsy that is? Yep. Sometimes when we fly a flimsy prop in the air and we put too high of a cell on it, it flattens out. Imagine what water's gonna do when you have the resistance of the boat going forward. So my gut says that I want a small prop, but I don't want it to be flimsy. So I grabbed here, was our HQ nine inch prop, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it down. Oh, that's a great so idea. It's rigid. And it'll actually look like a battleship prop. Yeah, look, they're, look, look if you ever see them, they're like cut up, they're very cut short like that. They look a lot more like a screw and stuff, but that way we won't have a lot of resistance, but also we can glue this on the bottom of the hull, and then the water can pass through, so it's not like giving a lot of resistance. Mm -hmm. It's kind of protected, and then this can spin, and instead of being half it above water, we can have the efficiency and have the whole thing's below water. Yeah and hopefully it won't flatten out. Cool, I like right? it. All right, let's do it. All right. Now, in a normal world, you're gonna have a lot of vibration because it's just a little bit one way or the other, it's gonna vibrate. But what I'm gonna show you is a trick on how you can use some sandpaper and use the rotation of it to make it perfect on both sides. There it is. So now we got a perfect angle on both sides and she's balanced at the same time. By the way, guys, say hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. What are you building? Uh, we're building three simple scouts. Jeremy is busy doing the final touches on the battleship and Josh is getting the power system set up. And I got our two warbirds here. Jeremy let me borrow his P40 and then I have the Corsair here which was designed by our friend John Overstreet. Because you can't have a battleship without having a battle. Now if you guys aren't familiar with flight test, these are our speed build kits. And they're pre-laser cut kits and they're made out of the same foam board that we made this battleship out of. And it's all common materials. So we have our foam board, we have barbecue skewers, popsicle sticks. It's it's all stuff that you can find at the dollar store and we even provide free plans so you could scratch build this if you want. So we 3D printed these awesome bombs that were actually designed by one of our great community members, Josh Orchard. And we printed them out on our new Creality printer, which we've been loving by the way. What I'm gonna be doing now is I'm going to be attaching a very simple bomb release mechanism. So if the boat floats and if it drives, 
I'm gonna take one of these planes and I'm gonna try to bomb it. I got the double zip tie nine gram servo bomb release mechanism that I just made from scratch here. Rubber band, don't forget that. And the way that this works is super simple. You put the bomb on, you bring it around through the rubber band and then line up that and then flip the switch. And now it is securing the bomb. Now, before we test it, we should go show the airplane owner. This is the first official test. And so when I flip the switch. <laughs> that, that's perfect. Flawless. Nice. <laughs> Let me guess, it grabbed onto this and was slow to slide yeah. off, right? Oh, that's a great idea. Take a zip tie, then you have plastic and then, boop, gone. All right, all right. So zip tie installed per Josh's recommendation. And now, if all goes correctly, Oh, that looked like a real bomb. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> just do it again. I just want to watch it again. So the cool thing is, is you can just engage the mechanism and then you can load anything you want up into it. You put candy, you can put an egg, you can put some bacon. All right, three, two, one. <laughs> so now the rest of the crew is finalizing the details on the deck of the ship and preparing it for battle. There we go. How many batteries do you have on So we got three batteries because I didn't want to solder up a huge long extension. Plus it's not really good for the batteries to push current through that distance. What we did here is we went to the aileron control. So basically, if I go to the right, we should see this one go. And if I go to the left. <laughs> the other one goes. Yeah, the other That's one goes. awesome, dude. Now what we had to do though, is I actually had to individually calibrate each one of these to go from uh, full left to center as the cutoff point. The new thing about throttle calibration is you go to 100%, wait for a couple beeps, move it back to where you want 0% to be. In this case, I wanted it in the center. So I didn't have to do anything overly complicated. <laughs> And I got thrusters. Yeah, that's gonna probably handle great. So how do you go forward? So if we go forward on the back here, I just have it on my throttle. And so it's just like an RC car. Just like an RC car, except I don't have reverse. I did three Lumineer 2200 milliamps all around here. So we just gotta plug all three of them together and we're good to go. I have a feeling that the reverse is gonna be something we really wanted to have. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get a mouthful of radial motor. Hey, you got this part? Yep. Coming down. Got it. Got Three, it. two, one, well, and there it's you your boat. <laughs> <My> boat. <laughs> That's so <laughs> ridiculous. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Pull over. <laughs> Pull over. There's something on your roof. You left the battleship on your roof. game plan is here is we're gonna make sure that the boat's actually controllable. The second we know it is, we're gonna go ahead and hand over to Jeremy. Alex and I are gonna run with our little fighter escort and try to bomb it. And then you're gonna try to do anything you can to keep it from getting shipwrecked. And I'm gonna retrieve the bombs. By the way, we have snapping turtles at Edgewater, so, you know. Suspense. Might wanna pull those up. <laughs> All right, you ready to put it in? Yep. Dun, da, da. Be free, warship. We're on a boat. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Dude, it has tons of power! Look at that! It turns really good. Wow! Okay, here you go, buddy. It turns great. She's all yours. Let's fly something. That's sick. This is awesome. Dude, first RC battleship ever of this size. That looks amazing on the water. Dude, that thing is unbelievable. All right, now we got the battleship in the water. One thing left to do. We're gonna bomb it. We gotta have a battle. So you got Corsair, I got the P40. Let's go fly. Ready? Awesome. Yep. Here we go. All right, first bombing run. I'm just right. gonna do a pass. Dude, that's awesome. All right, I think I think we got it lined up here. Jeremy, can you hold that heading? That's perfect. All right, Josh, I'm gonna follow you. Now, All right, okay? here I go. I'll, I'll go in a holding pattern. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Did you hear that noise? <laughs> oh, All right, here I come. Coming in with the P40. What's this? Oh, I got you. I got you in my sights. Oh, hit him! Hit him! Depth perception. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dude, you had a base of maneuver and I saw you. Uh, okay, I think I got it though. If I can get another run. So we recently did a episode where we dropped watermelons and we found out really quickly it is hard to be accurate. Yes. This is actually a lot easier than I thought. Because we're lower, yeah. Yeah, we're lower, we can line up on it. 
and it's not a watermelon. <laughs> yeah, so, it's not a watermelon yeah. in so a 20 pound plane. Jeremy's putting his waders on. Look at our little bombs floating. Oh yeah, there's a lot of silt. Careful, Jeremy. Jeremy, if you got a bail. Yeah, he's bailing. I need a stick or something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I got it, dude. You're on camera, bro. That was awesome. Yeah. So, Jeremy, you're awesome. <laughs> Hopefully, that seal on the inside worked. All right, guys, you ready for round two? Yeah. Oh, well, you're you're on it. Josh is lining it up now. I may do two passes, you know. Yeah. Just feel it out. I feel like the wind just shifted. You feel that? You got a crosswind now. Well, maybe I'll do this one. Oh, it's looking good. It's looking yeah. good. No! Nope. Oh! <laughs> Darn it! All right, go ahead and launch me, Austin. Oh, he's turning, he's turning broadside, man. You got a good target now. All right, here she comes. Yeah, let's hit it. Oh! Just over. Oh, man. I totally freaked out when I flipped the switch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just panicked. I was like, ah, I pulled up. <laughs> the boat's doing awesome, though, dude. We need to invest in one of those pool scooper things. Yeah. And there's definitely a leak in the crotch. Oh, oh no! 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 All right, so that was awesome. Yes. Uh, proves to be difficult, but nothing is more difficult than retrieving the floating bombs out of the pond. <laughs> All right, here we go. Josh taking off. Last time I got greedy and I, I did a one run, I am going to line it up and I'm going to study the boat. Yes. This is what the actual dive bombers used to do in World War II. Right. Oh Dude, my that gosh, you should have done it! I should have done it! <laughs> Every time! That was beautiful, dude. Right. Jeremy, I have to say you'd make a terrible battleship captain because you're positioning the boat perfectly for bombing runs. You're welcome. Here it comes. Nope, I'm not doing it. Oh, dang. All right, here we go. Last one. Looking good. Everything's looking good. Moment of truth. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you got it or not, but... It was close enough to make me happy. <laughs> if that was a bomb, it would have made a cacophony to rupture the side. If it yeah. was a torpedo, yeah. well, that would have been <laughs> end of the boat. So either way, I, I consider that a hit. Alrighty, I think I'm going to do a couple rounds too. I also don't know how much battery I have left. <laughs> Alright, coming in. All right. So you learned something? I'm ha yeah, I learned a lot right there. <laughs> All right, this is the one. I'm feeling it. I'm running on fumes here in the old P40. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> I don't even you know. You almost got it. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my goodness. We made jokes about this pond being really small. It's perfect. Yes. It is. It is the perfect size pond. It is. Pond. We do big projects like this all the time. We've even made a tank fly, so make sure you check out that video here. And huge shout out to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. The boat is a success. The bombing, not Close. so much. But overall, the whole project has been a success because it's not about getting that contact. It's about making memories with friends. Yeah. That's what we're all about. Yeah. Now we want to do something else with this ship. So leave us a comment down below of what you would like to see us do next. And maybe if we hit 1.5 million, we'll make this fly just like we made the tank fly. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you guys next time. And there's definitely a leak in the crotch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs>